If you're struggling with space on your flip chart, you may want to give your students access to further information by placing it off the board. You can do this by grouping an arrow with a text box or even an image. You can see here that I have two arrows on the side of the page, but when I pull them out, they magically reveal text that I've already had grouped with that arrow. So right here I have more information about that page. And right here I have a cute little girl telling me to not to forget to check for spelling. Now let's see how we can build one of these together. I'm going to go ahead and go to my shapes tool and we are just going to create an arrow. So go here to more shapes and we're going to grab the arrow tool. I'm going to create another arrow right here. Now I'm going to click on my text tool and we're going to type in some text. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight the text and we'll change the color to something a little easier to read, like let's say red. Now I'm going to use my selector tool, move the pieces to where I want them, and I'm going to highlight now both the text and the arrow. I can see they're both selected, and then up here from my object bar, I'm going to go ahead and click on the grouped, which now means that these two pieces are going to move together. Finally, so this piece doesn't move all over the place, I'm going to go back over to my browser, and we're going to go to the property browser, and you'll notice that I have this thing selected, this grouping of items, so I know that I'm picking the properties of that object right there, and I'm going to go down here to restrictors, and right here under restrictors it says can move. Instead of freely, I want this to move horizontally. So now it's only going to move left and right. And I can't move it up and down. Then all I have to do is drag it off to the side of my page. And it's just like my other grouped pulley right there. Very cool. Now if you're lacking space to group your objects, don't forget you can zoom in and out of your page right up here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more to like 50%. And I can see all the pieces that I have on the side of my page. This is really helpful for more complex grouping. Now I'm going to go back to best fit. Now let's look at some pages that incorporate this idea of pulleys and groups. This lesson page by DK uses this technique to pull the items horizontally using these green triangles right here. So I can drag this out and get more information about the tarantula venom. Ugh. That doesn't, <laughs> ugh. Don't like that at all. I can get information about a hawk, and it's kind of cool. They're lined up to go right to the animal. And again, these are set with restrictors, so they only move left and right. This page right here is developed by Scholastic, and I can see the text pulls up from the bottom. I hope you find this active tip about groups and pulleys helpful in making your lessons more interactive and more fun for yourself and your students.